The Anaheim Ducks are in the midst of a rebuild, having added a bunch of talented young forwards. While expectations for the season weren't incredibly high, there was hope that with the core foundational pieces like Troy Terry, Trevor Zegris, and the newly selected Leo Carlson, this team could take another step forward towards being competitive in the West. Unfortunately, as they were one of the first teams eliminated from playoff contention, they enter another offseason with questions about where they go from here. So what went wrong with the 2023-24 Anaheim Ducks? Greg Cronin was a bit of a wild card hire when the Ducks added him as their new head coach in June 2023. In his first year as head coach in the NHL, the Ducks have been one of the worst teams in the NHL, but the question is whether or not he is culpable. And in my opinion, there are a lot of factors that seem to indicate that a lot of the Ducks' struggles this year are because of Cronin's coaching. For one, the Ducks are one of the most penalized teams in the entire NHL. They have the highest penalties taken per 60 minutes of any team in the NHL, by a pretty significant gap over the second place team. They also lead the NHL in bench minors, and they are one of the top five teams in terms of major penalties, which means that they're not just taking your run of the mill slashing or hooking penalties, they are taking major penalties. That shows that they are an incredibly undisciplined team. So line deployments have been okay, but there have been some questionable decisions such as running at that Johnston Carrick Leeson line so often, as well as keeping McTavish and the Toronto on the same line together so often. But on the other hand, the Ducks don't get off to slow starts that often. They're middle of the pack when it comes to first period goals for and goals against. They're towards the bottom of the pack in terms of comebacks after the first and second period, and as well as holding on to leads after the first and second. Ultimately, this is a bad team that Cronin is leading, and I think he's doing some decent things but the penalties and the line deployments give me pause as to whether he's going to be the long-term solution in Anaheim. Listen up, Fives. A 10 is speaking. It has been a year from hell when it comes to the players that the Anaheim Ducks were expecting to take a step forward, namely their two young studs, Troy Terry and Trevor Zegras. Terry has been fine, 52 points and 20 goals in 70 games thus far, but Zegras has severely regressed. Only four goals and nine points in 25 games this year, injured and out of the lineup to the point that there were talks that he could be moved at the trade deadline and to be honest that is looking like it could be very likely in the offseason as he could be looking for a change of scenery. Their big offseason acquisition in Alex Kalorn has been okay. He's got 33 points in 57 games which isn't terribly off of his pace that he had been on in Tampa. They have found a nice surprise in 29 year old Frank Vetrano who has his first 30 goal campaign and 53 points in 76 games this year. Leo Carlson's rookie year hasn't gone quite as he would have hoped, but 9 goals and 25 points in 49 games is still pretty good. It's only the injury bug that has kind of been holding him back this year as well. On the back end, they basically have nobody. 32-year-old Cam Fowler is starting to show severe signs of decline, while free agent Radko Gudis is probably their best defenseman so far. 21-year-old Basic McTavish did take a bit of a leap forward with 19 goals and 42 points in 64 games this year. He's one point off of hitting his career high in points. That's something, but unfortunately, it's a little too little too late for this year. This is a team that just plain and simply doesn't have the talent to compete this year, and that was always going to be the case. But it can't be encouraging when you have guys like Trevor Zegers taking a step back and neither McTavish nor Carlson are showing signs that they can be an elite top line forward in the future. It was another disappointing year for John Gibson, who started the season quite strong but faded down the stretch. His 890 save percentage was made to look even worse by the fact that he had an 885 save percentage in February and an 844 save percentage in March. While he could have been an attractive piece to move at the deadline, basically nobody wanted him at his age salary and skill level. He has a negative 0.199 goals saved above expected per 60, which is bottom 15 in the NHL. Now on the other hand, Lucas Dostal has been better and more consistent with an 899 save percentage and 3.44 goals against average, but his goal saved above expected per 60 is only slightly higher than Gibson's at negative 0.187 on the gear. The Ducks defense may be bad, but their goaltending has also been bad behind them, unfortunately. The Ducks were on the higher end of the injured NHL teams according to NHL Injuries Viz, but they weren't the highest. The only real significant injury they had this year were to players like Brock McGinn and Trevor Zegras, although the way Zegras was playing, I don't think they necessarily missed him too much this year. They did lose Jamie Drysdale for about 30 games before they traded him for Cutter Gauthier, 
and Alex Killorn did miss a couple of 10 game stretches with different injuries, but other than that, their main contributors have been healthy other than a few nicks and scratches. The Ducks weren't lucky when it came to injuries, but they weren't being held back from success this season because their players were injured. You think you're so damn special? I, I, I don't think I'm special. <laughs> My mother always said I'm not special. For a team that is so often shorthanded, you would think that the Anaheim Ducks should have enough practice to be one of the best PK teams in the NHL. But alas, no, they are the second worst PK team in the NHL, ahead of only the lowly New York Islanders with a PK percentage on the year of 72.7%. And for the love of God, Cronin, please stop giving Cam Fowler so many goddamn PK minutes. Their power play, on the other hand, is at least respectable, 24th in the NHL with just under an 18% success rate. And that's even more impressive considering the fact that, like I said, Trevor Zegers has been MIA for the entire year. And that's largely attributable to the fact that guys like Petrano, Ryan Strom, and Yucca Silverberg have all been contributing at a very decent clip, earning extra power play ice time. But being a bad team with a decent power play doesn't matter much when you're a bad team that takes the most penalties of anybody and has one of the worst penalty kills in the NHL. It's like putting fins on your Maserati when the engine's on fire. Hell, I'm in high five, dude. At 5 on 5, the Anaheim Ducks were, as expected, one of the worst teams in the NHL. Their expected goals percentage at even strength was under 47%, which was 6th worst in the NHL, and they had the 3rd fewest expected goals at even strength, ahead of only the Chicago Blackhawks and Detroit Red Wings. However, they were pretty decent at even strength, middle of the pack in terms of expected goals allowed, but honestly, they just did not have the talent to make an impact at 5 on 5. They only had 4 players, Zegris, Gudis, Silverberg, and Leo Carlson, who were positive expected goals for at 5-on-5. Five five. Just as a team, not a whole lot goes right for the Anaheim Ducks when they're at even strength, and for a team that isn't great on the power play and is abjectly terrible shorthanded, that is just not conducive to finding success as a team. Don't make me fire you. You can't fire me. You're acting manager, not office manager, so you have no firing powers. Pat verbeek has been the GM of the Ducks since February 2022, and in that time, they have been one of the worst teams in the NHL. Now, they are committed to a rebuild, and they do have a very strong prospect pool. And I actually like some of the deals that he made at this last deadline. Getting Cutter Gauthier for Jamie Trysdale was a big one. They got a third round pick from Ilya Labushkin and somehow turned Adam Henrique into a first round pick. And with seven picks in the first three rounds this year, they're going to be able to restock that prospect pool even better, or even better to use those picks as ammunition to go and get a real game changer and a trade. Now, the one problem for Verbeek and the Ducks is that they are locked into some pretty bad contracts next year, namely the Trevor Zegers contract, which aged like milk in the sun, and that Alex Killorn contract, which looked terrible from the moment the ink was dry. They also got Cam Fowler under contract for another two years at $6.5 million a year, which has also not aged great like him. And then finally, John Gibson is under contract for $6.4 million through 2027, and given how bad his decline has been, that contract might be an unmovable albatross. So yeah, if I was Pat Verbeek entering now my third offseason as a losing GM, uh, I wouldn't be getting too comfortable. This is a team that needs to start making progress and probably be competing for the playoffs next year. Again, the Ducks weren't supposed to be a good team, but there's a difference between being a bad team and being a team that looks like it has no future, and that's more what the Ducks look like right now. With guys like Zegris not taking the step forward, with guys like McTavish and Carlson still sputtering a little bit, Troy Terry seems to have hit a plateau, they're locked into some really bad contracts. This is a franchise that really needs an energy boost. Now, it's not completely bleak. Like I said, they got a bunch of draft picks this year. Frank Vitrano's under contract for another year. Kurt Gauthier can be up on the NHL team next year. Leo Carlson will probably take another step forward. And like I mentioned, those guys like Vitrano, Ryan Strome, Radko Gudis, Jackson Lacombe, they've all outperformed expectations. And there is plenty of exciting youth on this team. But make no mistake, expectations need to be higher for the Ducks next year. It's not playoffs or bust, but you better be competitive next year or else some heads are going to start to roll. Mason McTavish to Terry. 